Okay, so, um, you know, the inner product measures similarity, so the kernel measures similarity. Coming up with good kernels is, is equivalent to coming up with the right measure of similarity for your problem, for your application. Okay, so construct the right measure of similarity. Uh, if it's an infinite dimensional space, you have no problem, but otherwise, you know, you need a linear model to be pl plausible in that transform space, otherwise you won't be able to separate the data, so it's the wrong measure of similarity. Okay. And let's have a look at some examples. So string kernels. So if your if your domain of interest is strings, so now we're going to just look at you know kernels in all these various domains just to show you that with very little difficulty, with almost effortlessly, we can apply the support vector machine technology to any domain: strings, graphs, images, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So okay, so let's say your your application domain is string, and let me give you some examples. So DNA sequences, text. So here, you know, I have you know, a sequence and another sequence, and maybe we're trying to classify, do these sequences represent proteins that do the same thing? Okay. And so you come up with a measure of similarity between sequences. And, you know, that, so that se sequence is an input X, and another sequence is an input X prime. And, you know, the, the, the measure of similarity need not be, you know, a function. It can be an algorithm. So you could compute, for example, the longest common subsequence, okay, and normalize that by the product of the lengths of the sequences. Because remember, the kernel, you know, should measure similar similarity up to the norm. So you might multiply by the two norms, the two lengths, and then compute the, the um, you know, the, the percentage similarity as um, the longest common subsequence divided by the maximum length of a sequence. So that's a measure of similarity. Now I have a measure of similarity, okay, four strings relevant to DNA sequences, and I can go and do my classification task using the support vector machinery, the kernel machinery. Okay. Let's take an example of text. Now, in text, there are, you know, feature vectors, features that are typically constructed involve things that are, that are called bags of words, where, you know, you count the number of occurrences of specific words, that can be a feature vector, or co-occurrences of, of sub, substrings or subsequences, those can be feature vectors. Okay. So, you know, uh, what I want to show you here is that, you know, sometimes you have to be relatively careful in, in constructing your similarity measure. So I'm showing you two pieces of text here. Okay. Dear sir, with reference to your letter dated, you know, blah, 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 I want to confirm that the order number placed, blah, 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 you know, we would appreciate if you can send me the account details to which I must pay, and, you know, we are expecting a 2% discount, and so on and so forth. So this is clearly a business email. Okay. And then, dear Jane, I'm terribly sorry to hear the news of your hip fracture. I can only imagine what a terrible time you must be going through, blah, blah, blah. Well, this is an example of an email that, you know, is, is clearly a personal email of Jane's, and some friend is consoling her on, you know, some hip fracture. Okay, so now, are these texts similar or not? Okay, because this is the question you need to answer in order to derive a, a kernel, in order to define a measure of similarity, in order to define your kernel. Now, your kernel can be based on the input, which is bags of words, okay? But the first thing you have to ask yourself is, for my application, are these two pieces of text similar? Okay, and if you are classifying spam versus non-spam, they are similar, okay? Because neither of these are spam. One is business and one is about personal, but neither of them are spam. On the other hand, if you're classifying business versus personal, I'm trying to build a classifier for my own mailbox, which is business versus personal, then these are not similar. And so whatever your kernel is, so for example, if you're using bag of words features, then you might identify certain kinds of features as you know, business features, certain kinds of features as spam features, certain kinds of features as personal features, and whatever your me measure of similarity should take into account the nature of the problem. Okay? Because you know, these, two, these two inputs are similar or not depending on the specific task. Okay? And so this just shows you that you know, when you define a, a kernel, you must look at exactly what is the task you're solving, and the task you're solving can be different, okay? even if the input space and the inputs are the same. Let's look at, you know, classification problems on graphs. Just to show you that it's effortless now to, to work in any domains you want, as long as you can get me a measure of similarity for your classification problem, okay? Um, here are examples of classification problems involving graphs. So protein networks, and I give you protein networks, and I ask you, do they perform the same function? Or nodes within a network. So you have this huge Facebook, and here's a node, and I can represent a node by, let's say, its neighborhood, or its two neighborhood, where, we, where, where by neighborhood we mean friends. And then you might ask, you know, it was successful uh, when I marketed the iPhone to this node, which other nodes should I market to? Okay, so we're looking for a measure of similarity between nodes in a, in a network, and a node is defined as a graph. Okay, so we can try to come up with similarity measures 
between graphs. So the kernel takes as input a graph G1 and a graph G2, okay, and outputs a measure of similarity. Once you have that kernel, boom, you can run the kernel machinery and do classification. Okay. And there are many ways of constructing similarity metrics between, between graphs based, based on sort of random walks, degree sequences, connectivity properties, mixing properties, and so on and so forth. Okay. Sometimes, you know, you can just look at the, so I'm a node and, you know, I have a set of nodes who are in my neighborhood and you're a node and you have a set of nodes. We can just take those two sets of nodes and ask what's the set similarity. And there are, you know, a, a variety of kernels that, you know, take as input sets and the, the sort of, Jacquard coefficient is one of the most popular. You look at the intersection of the two sets, divide by the size of the union. Okay, so that's a measure of similarity. In fact, we can prove that this is, is related to a metric. Okay, so that's, in fact, a very well-behaved measure of similarity. Okay. Let's talk about images. And wow, look, we've effortlessly been able to address problems in text, problems in graphs, and now images. And I'm showing a young picture of me. Look at how handsome I used to be. And, uh, you know, a, a picture of a, a co-author of mine some time ago, and look at how handsome he is, okay? And then the question is, okay, so we're doing image. So the kernel, for whatever the classification problem is, or the application that I'm trying to solve, okay, for build a predictive form, you know, is going to take as input image one and image two. Okay. Now you take these two images, and the kernel is supposed to say, are the two images similar? So you build a kernel that's based on, you know, whatever features you can extract, let's say convolutional free features, and then you build a kernel that outputs similarity. Okay. Now, the question you have to answer is, are these, so when building this kernel, this measure of similarity, you'd have to ask yourself the question, are these two images similar? And it depends on the task. Okay. So these two images are similar if you're trying to recognize pictures with faces. And so whatever kernel you produce must extract the relevant features and output the right measure of similarity that would say that these are, have a high level of similarity because there are two, there are faces in each of these pictures. Okay. And once you have that kernel, boom, you can run the support vector machinery, the kernel machinery, get the optimal classifier, get the support vectors, the important data points, and ready to classify. Okay. okay. On the other hand, these two images are not similar if the task is, let's say, access control and you are trying to distinguish Malik from Christos, then these two are not similar. So you need much more detailed measure of similarity. The kernel would have to get more intricate. Okay. And, um, you know, you could imagine even using a deep network to build image features, okay, and then Euclidean similarity between image features built from some, let's say, image net uh, pre-trained deep network would be the measure of similarity, and now you can, on top of that, run the kernel machinery. Bam! Okay. So many things you can do with the power of the kernel machinery. Okay. And what is that? It's just a linear model. Wow! The power of the linear model. Together with the inner product algorithm, together with the kernel, together with the notion of the optimal hypothesis. Okay. And it's no surprise that at some, at some point, this support vector machinery just completely wiped neural networks from the face of research and application. But now neural networks in the form of deep networks are back. But with lots of data, you can pre-train and get nice image features. Okay, or nice you know, text features, nice language models, and so on. Okay. And then we can apply those feature transforms to real data. Okay. So, you know, one other thing that I'll mention in conclusion is that at the end of the day, this fancy machinery is a similarity-based method, and there's nothing else that there is in machine learning. Okay. You have data, you have a test point, you know, if you cannot identify the data that should contribute to the classification of this test point, if you cannot identify a similarity, okay, uh, that would identify those data points, then what, what can you do? There's nothing you can do. The, the premise of learning is that you can conclude something about a test point because all we care about is the test point by looking at the data okay. and, and how the classes, how, how the data has been classified. Okay. And by looking at the data, you can infer something about the test point. We don't care about the data, we care about the test point. And, you know, but that method of identifying which data points are going to play a, a big role by definition could be uh, uh, looked at as a similarity. Okay, and so that concludes our discussion of support vector machines ending on this very powerful kernel machine. So use it, it's very powerful, just like a deep network, and this is much easier to handle because all you have to do is choose your regularization parameter C and your kernel. The kernel is where all the magic occurs. Okay. Um, and so now we've covered similarity based methods, RBF networks, neural networks, the linear model, and the robust linear model. So neural networks are cascaded linear models. Uh, uh, support vector machine is the robust linear model, and then it can be used with any measure of similarity, any kernel, okay, to do very powerful learning even in infinite dimensional spaces. So that more or less covers, you know, uh, what we will do with respect to techniques, advanced techniques. 
Okay. And so what we will move on to now are sort of methods. Uh, now the next lecture will be methods that are useful for all techniques. And in particular, we're going to talk about pre-processing or learning aids, things that can help in almost any uh, application and no matter what technique you decide to use. Okay. We will mostly focus on putting the data into a nice default form, you know, because most algorithms that we build, whatever the technique is, expect the data in some default form. Okay, but for now, checking out.